Getting into ski racing at university is, hands down, one of the best things that I've ever done. But when I started, I had no idea what kit I needed, where to get it, and what stuff was a bit of a waste of time. So today, I'm going to go through all of my gear and rate it from the total essentials for the newbie on a budget to the more expensive items for someone who's a bit more committed and knows that they really want to perform as well as they can. Welcome back everyone. As you can see from behind me, it has dumped with snow here, which was very exciting. I spent all of this morning running around the garden, throwing snowballs, building snowmen, just rolling around in it. It was great fun. But unfortunately, it started raining. So I thought I'd come in here and make a quick video solving a problem that I think almost every aspiring ski racer has. And that problem is knowing what gear to get in which order to suit your budget and your level of commitment. In this video, I'm going to go through all the different options that are available to ski racers, the best places to get them from, and the order to get them in. Getting these things in this order will give you a great shot at really enjoying ski racing, whether that's at university or at a club. As usual, links and timestamps in the video description below, and if you have any questions, just ping them in the comments and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. But before we start, a quick message from my sponsor, who doesn't exist. So if you'd like to sponsor me, go on then, it would be great. We can do good business. The first thing we're going to talk about is where to get second-hand equipment. Uh, there are lots of ski racing items that you can get second-hand and they work just as well as if you bought them new, but they're just much better value. So things like bags, um, pole guards, shin guards, poles. So as I go through the video I'll mention if something is worth getting second hand or whether you should get it brand new. The first place I'd recommend having a look for second hand kit is Ski Bay, um, the group on Facebook. There are a couple of groups, there's Ski Bay and there's Ski Bay UK and both are full of people posting their second hand kit for sale and often it's really good stuff that they just don't need anymore so worth snapping up. It's worth checking back regularly because things obviously come in and out as people post stuff there. The second place I'd recommend looking for second-hand ski gear is your university snow sports club. Clubs like Edinburgh University have systems where you can rent pairs of skis for the season and it's always worth also talking to people who've been at the club longer because they may have old kit that they are willing to sell. For equipment that's more personal, so I'm thinking particularly boots, um, it's definitely worth getting these brand new. And your first port of call is ski dealerships. Ski Bartlett is the absolute creme de creme, and that's the place that I'd recommend going for your boot fitting if you're in the south. If you're shopping around for price, then there are other good ski dealerships, and I'll link a couple which are worth looking at in the video description below. Definitely have a look at their end of season sales in July, August, where you can get some really, really good deals on last year's kit. Before you buy something from a ski dealership, it's worth checking on your university's snow sports page and seeing whether they have a deal or a discount that you can use to make your purchase cheaper. For example, have a look at Cambridge's page, which I've linked below. Now you know where to get your kit, we're going to talk about the absolute necessities that you need to have a go at ski racing. These items are absolute essentials and you'll probably find you have most of them already. First item on our list is gloves which are necessary for skiing on any dry slope or indoor snow slope in the UK. Um, these aren't anything fancy, I think they're like your gardening gloves and they're pretty used but they do the job. If you're skiing in England, either on dry slope or indoors, then you don't need anything fancy like a proper ski jacket and salopettes. So tracksuits just like this, tracksuit top and bottoms, are absolutely fine for your outside. Layers are the name of the game though. So tracksuit outside, and then you probably want some thermals as a base layer. Then I'd recommend a roll neck like the Uniqlo Heat Tech line, and they do very good leggings as well, which keep your, keep your legs warm. If it's really cold, a fleece is also good. And you just stuff that underneath your hoodie, and it's great because if and when you fall over, you'll be nice and padded so you won't get big bruises. The final couple of things to get are a buff of some kind. I wear one all the time when it's cold. They are absolutely fantastic keeping your neck warm. Nothing special, you can use a scarf if you don't have one or you don't want to buy one. And finally, some long, thin socks are absolutely essential. I would recommend getting thin socks and then putting lots of layers on your legs because the reason you often get cold feet when you're skiing is because the hot blood that comes from your torso gets cold as it goes down your legs and reaches your feet. So the way to stop getting cold feet is make sure that you've got lots of layers on your legs so that it keeps the blood warm as it goes down to your toes. The first thing that you probably won't have 
are some pole guards and these are absolutely fantastic. They stop your fingers getting uh, bruised and snapped when you're doing slalom and hitting the gates um, and definitely the first thing that I would buy if I was starting out as a ski racer. You have a few different options for pole guards. These ones are the full hand guards and you just connect them to here and they cover your whole hand all the way up which is very good. The other option that you can get are these half guards which don't quite go over the top of the grip and so if you're unlucky you can get snapped at the top as you go past the skate. If you have the choice I definitely recommend getting the full guards and often on ski bay you can find people who are giving away or selling their old ones for very good value. When you're connecting them to your poles a bit of gaffer tape is great to wrap around your poles so that when you snap the guard on it stays stuck. So we've talked about the absolute basic pieces of kit and now we're going to talk about the bits of kit that are worth investing in if you've decided that you like skiing and ski racing and that you want to do a bit more of it. The first thing that you should stop borrowing from the ski rental shop are boots. Boots like this are absolutely fantastic. They are so much more comfortable than anything that you rent and you'll find that they just make your skiing so much better. Ski racing boots are normally quite a lot stiffer than the ones that you rent as well. So you'll find that if you're improving that you can push harder, get more edge angle, go faster. All these things that if you're even being slightly competitive, it's nice to be able to do. As I said before, Ski Barlet is a fantastic boot fitter. There are lots of other ones um, around, but it's worth going to a specialist ski racing shop rather than just a shop that sells ski boots. Ski racing boots tend to have a flex of about 130 for maybe 120, 250 is, is the normal ski race boot range. These are about 130, which is pretty stiff. And it means that when I push with my leg, I'm held very firmly by the boot. In terms of fit, they should be pretty tight, but not painful. So when you're putting them on, think about that and be aware that the lining will definitely pack out no matter how much you think it won't, it always does. If in doubt, I'd say go a little bit smaller. The next thing for the aspiring amateur to get is a pair of slalom skis. I say slalom rather than giant slalom because if you're in England, chances are you'll either be racing indoors or on dry slope and most of these are slalom courses. Getting your own pair of skis is a brilliant investment because these giant slalom skis for example cost me the same as six days rental in Sasfe so quite quickly you find that you've made up the money that you spent. The only downside is that you've got to carry them around yourself. When you're looking at getting a pair of skis second hand can often be the best way to go but also can be a trap for the unwary so I've made another video which explains what to look for when you're buying second hand skis you can find it in the video description below. In terms of size you're looking for a slalom ski that is somewhere between your nose and the top of your forehead so I'm 174 centimetres and these are 163 centimetre skis. For dry slope, you often go a bit shorter, so you might go for a 155 centimetre ski. Aside from length, the other key measurement is how wide the ski is underneath your boot. If you look at the bottom of the ski, normally there are three numbers that say how wide the ski is. And for a slalom ski, it will be between 65 and 73, 75. You often have a choice between the top of the range, very professional, FIS compliant racing ski, and the one just down from that, which is sometimes called a master ski uh, or a high performance ski. And that's normally the one that you want to go for unless you're getting quite competitive about your ski racing. The reason I recommend the ski one down from professional level is that they tend to be a little bit softer, a little bit more forgiving if your movements aren't absolutely perfect around each turn. They'll still have plenty of energy and stiffness when you're cranking around the turns, but will be a little bit more forgiving if you get a little bit late in the line or something goes a little bit wrong. The next absolutely key piece of kit are shin guards. Now, uh, these are basically just pieces of plastic that you put on your legs to stop the poles, the slalom poles, from bashing into you. Uh, so they don't have to be anything special and I would recommend second hand. If you've got this far in taking off pieces of kit, then it's time to get your own helmet. I like the ones with the solid ears and whatever helmet you get, make sure that you can attach a chin guard to it because that's the next piece of kit that I recommend. It attaches to your helmet, something like this, and means that a slalom pole doesn't hit you in the face. Make sure that the chin guard is removable though because if you're racing giant slalom, then you can't wear a chin guard. The final thing on my kit list for the aspiring amateur is a big bag to chuck all of your gear into. You'll find that once you've got boots, hat, chin guard, 
pole guards, all these things that you want somewhere to put them in. And a big bag absolutely sorts you out. These ski ones are particularly good because you can fit boots in them as well as all sorts of other stuff. Um, and ski bay, second hand, is definitely the place to go. Okay, at this point you really have everything that you need to race university to a pretty good level. But there are a few things that you might want to add to your repertoire of, of gear. To boost your enjoyment, look after your kit and take your skiing to the next level. So um, the first thing that I recommend are some tuning kit. Things like iron, clamps, files, brake ties, all this stuff, definitely worth getting hold of. The second of the nice to have items are arm guards, which pieces of plastic or carbon fibre that go on your forearms and protect them when you're doing giant slot. I've never actually got a pair, I just suck it up and get bruises on my forearms. But if you're doing a lot of giant slot, it's definitely worth getting. Thirdly, you might get what's called a booster strap for the top of your boot. So these actually have an inbuilt one, and these are basically a thick bit of elastic that goes around the top of your boot and gives it a bit of pop when you push it forwards, it springs back a bit. If your boots don't have booster straps, then you might want to consider getting some because they can help make your transitions more energetic and poppy. Fourthly, it can be nice to have some of the fancy race gloves made by Lecky or Hestra. And these are basically normal gloves with built-in knuckle dusters uh, so that if you're punching past gates, then you don't hurt your hands. I've never got them myself because if you have a full hand guard, then you don't really need them. And finally, and this is a very niche item for people who are doing a lot of dry slope skiing, you can get ski bumps for the tips of your ski. And this means that it doesn't get stuck in the dead dress plastic as easily. One thing I definitely avoid as a beginner racer is having powder guards on your racing skis because these can easily get caught in the plastic. Something smaller like that is much, much better. I hope you've enjoyed this video. The first thing for you to do is head over to the websites and pages I've suggested and have a look at some of the kit. I would highly recommend getting a set of full hand pole guards as your first purchase. Second, check out my other skiing videos such as the extended edit I did of my heli skiing trip to Iceland. Thirdly, please like and subscribe to my channel. It takes two seconds for you and it makes all the difference to me. Um, that's all from me. Have fun out there and till next time.